All right, welcome everyone. My name is Charlie. This is my Tesla turbine electric generator. Today I'm going to be doing a test to see how well it can power different varying loads. I've got a 250 watt light here and then each of these light bulbs on the table are 600 watts each. So we can do up to 2,650 watts in total. We've got pretty simple setup. The turbine is geared up to the generators at a 46 to 15 gear ratio. The three phase high frequency four pole generators are rectified to DC to go into the inverter, which puts it to 120 VAC out. It might be about 115 to 120 VAC out. Uh, it'll go in at a little over 12 volts total. I've got a timer, or it's a clock right here so that we can see the actual amount of time that's gone through each test to see this so there's no you can see there's no fudging in any of the the speeds of the film so you know it's exactly as long as it says uh, i've got the tanks up to 150 psi or just shy of it there's 200 gallons at that the compressor is turned off so i'm just going to be dumping it through the turbine the frequency on the multimeter just so happens to be about the same as the RPM as the turbine. The, the digits will be, the, the decimal place will be at different points. I'm just going to start with 250 watts and keep increasing. All right, let's go. About 80 PSI now. Wow, we're going really far here. And that's about all she wrote. All right. All right, well, you can see you know, that's a not so pleasant noise. But it's not all that loud. And you know, we're using gears. These are just RC car gears. So they're not like the best kind of gears. I made the little hub that it goes on. Not on very accurate machine. Chinese CNC machine over there. That's, I don't even know how long it was, but I'll let you know in the uh, things above. We'll move on to the next test before we're down to 30 PSI on the tanks. That's the lowest it's gone to. Cool. All right, here we go. We're going to do the next round. Just for record, it was at 35 PSI, and it took 12 minutes and 59 seconds to get it back up to just shy of 150 PSI. All right, I'm at 600 watts now. This bulb will go. Let's see how long it does. 200 gallons.
now. Alright. We are going to do the 1450 watts, which is two of these lights and the one little one. We should be all set to go. Oh, I forgot about that. Ready, steady, go. almost the whole time. Oh, there we go. We're gonna do 2050. That's three of the big lights and one of the small ones. We're at just above 150 PSI. Ready, set, go.
right, last and final one, 26.50. All set up, I'm ready to go. go through this little spreadsheet I put together. Over on the left here we have the rated load for each of the lights. It's 250 to 2650. I have the run time for each of the loads, how long they ran. Then there's the final pressure at the end of each run, which is how much left in the tank, so we can calculate how much energy was available. And then the next to it is how long it took each run to fill after the dump then there's the inverter output voltage because on each of the runs the actual output voltage on the inverter was a little bit under 120 of the rated one so now i wanted to make sure to calculate what the actual load out to the electrical load from there i calculated the energy to the light over the time run so it's watts which is joules per second times second which gives you joules out then i calculated the loss at that rpm and in previous power loss tests uh, we found that there's about two horsepower continuous loss at this rpm which equates to about 1.4 or something something watts so i just put about 1.5 because this is also a little bit of an estimate here too it could be a little higher it could be a little lower also these power loss tests are for the unloaded condition too so as these are all loaded it should be higher so we'll just leave it at 1500 and call it a day there something you'll notice though is that the amount of energy that went to loss is a lot higher for the low load run because it ran for a lot longer so it had to push through the loss for a lot longer so from calculating the loss and then how long that loss was pushed through to we get the energy to loss and then we adding these together we get the total energy converted this energy to loss this is something like gears to the bearings when we go to the direct to shaft to the generator this should be most of this should be recoverable so the kinetic energy of the disc at that rpm is 20,000. this will be the least efficient use of the air is when the turbine was spinning up. From there, we get this total energy converted, which is a sum of these three numbers, which will give us the amount of energy that was put to the turbine shaft. Now we get to the efficiency spread, and I calculated the efficiency a couple different ways, and again, this is a spread, it's not an exact. Essentially, I calculated it first by saying, well, we know off-the-shelf compressors dump most of their energy out to the air, it's heated compression, and if you're lucky, you're going to get 10 to 15 percent out of them, so I put this 12.5 percent, and then we know that it's it's a 10 kilowatt gasoline compressor, so it doesn't put its max power out for running. So I estimated between a 5,000 watt and a 7,000 watt input from the compressor. Again, it's usually about the half the power of an engine is what it's rated, but I still did this spread here. And then I said 12.5% of the 5,000 watt input would give us this spread of numbers here, and then 12.5% of the 7,000 watt. And then I went and calculated the ideal gas law on how much energy was available in the adiabatic expansion of 200 gallons of compressed air at 145 to 150 psi and it gives us this number and it just so happened that my spread here was just a little above and a little below basically means that the engine's running at probably about two-thirds rated power and so the very full wide span here is 35 percent to 20 percent efficiency to mechanical and electrical output 